Praise God. Good evening once again and good to see all of you. Welcome to our Sunday evening service. And uh, today we are going to look at a very uh, important uh, message because it's important for children of God to know the truth. Because the Bible says it's only the truth that will set you free. Amen. How many of you believe that only the truth will set you free? Okay. So the title for today's uh, Sunday message is The Greatest Manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The greatest manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Now, what do you think is the greatest manifestation of the Holy Spirit is? Now, when we say the greatest manifestation of the Holy Spirit, my precious people of God, that tells us that there are other manifestations of the Holy Spirit of God also. But do you know the greatest manifestation of the Holy Spirit of God is common to you and I. So I want to start off with good news. The good news, according to the word of God, is the greatest manifestation of the Holy Spirit of God is common to every believer. So you can't say, oh, only pastors are called to you know, function in the night. The Holy Spirit of God functions only through pastor belief. No. The Bible says otherwise. The greatest manifestation of the Holy Spirit belongs to each and every one of us. So we are going to look at what this greatest manifestation of the Holy Spirit is. Because with this message, none of us will be able to give an excuse saying, Oh, I don't want to serve the Lord. I don't want to think about doing anything for Jesus. No. We have pastors for that. No, Pastor Bimal is there. No, Pastor Ronnie is there. Let them do that. They are the pastors. Let them preach. We'll listen to what they have to say. Uh, we, at the end, uh, we'll say amen. No? When we say amen, they'll also be happy. Let's make them happy and you know, keep them happy like that. So they will preach more. No. All these excuses, uh, they are going to throw them away into the dustbin this evening. How I many of you are saying amen? <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. So the greatest manifestation of the Holy Spirit of God. My precious people of God, the greatest manifestation of the Holy Spirit is you witnessing for the Lord. That is the greatest manifestation of the Holy Spirit. I will prove this to you from the Bible in a, in a, in a moment. But let, before we go there, let me explain it to you this way. When a person under the action of the Holy Spirit of God releases a prophetic word, that is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. When a healing word is given and when a person receives healing, that is also a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. So like I said, the Holy Spirit manifests in different ways, through healings, through prophecy, through deliverance, all these ways. But the Bible says the greatest manifestation of the Holy Spirit is common to you and I, unless otherwise, if it was to do with prophecy, the body of Christ will look at a person who is functioning in the prophetic gift and say, oh, the greatest manifestation of, of the Holy Spirit is limited only to that person, only to that preacher, only to that pastor, only to that prophet, only to that evangelist. So the greatest manifestation of the Holy Spirit will be confined to few people to a selected number of individuals. But how many of you know that God is a fair God? He is so fair. That's why the Bible says he has no respect of persons. Galatians chapter 2 verse number 6. Acts chapter 10 verse number 34. The Bible tells us God is no respect of persons. Why? Because he loves his children equally. Therefore, the manifestation, the greatest manifestation of the Holy Spirit of God belongs to every child of God. Let's turn our Bibles to Acts chapter 1, verse number 8. Acts chapter 1, verse number 8. And we're going to look at the very words of Jesus, okay? Now, this is after Jesus died and rose again, just before he ascended. Now, good to see some of you taking the Bibles into your hands. And uh, no, I want to uh, make a suggestion also. 
for those of you right now, for example, you have a maybe if you have a, a difficulty in reading small letters, one thing that you can do is get a, a hard copy of the Bible that has the print in you know in, in big, big words, in big letters. Because let me tell you something: the word of God is much more powerful in the book rather than having it in the form. Yeah. So that's something that you can do because I know some of you may be having certain challenges like that, but uh, these are ways that we can, you know, improve ourselves. So Acts chapter one, verse number eight, the words of Jesus, what is he telling? But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Can you see the first commission Jesus is giving regarding the Holy Spirit of God? The first, the greatest commission Jesus gives about the Holy Spirit of God. And after that, Jesus is taken into heaven. Can you see what he's telling? He, you will receive what? You will receive power from the Holy Spirit of God. And you shall become what? Witnesses. Do you know this is common to each and every one here? For each and every one of you, precious ones here in this service right now, this belongs to you. Why don't you place one hand over your heart and say, Lord, thank you for your greatest manifestation, Holy Spirit of God, belongs to me today. In the name of Jesus. Now, therefore, my precious people of God, if you take witnessing for Jesus seriously, you won't be able to even fathom the things that can happen for you. You won't be able to comprehend in your little understanding the great things that will happen to you if you take witnessing for Jesus seriously. And I'm going to show you from scripture today so that you, the Holy Spirit will open up the eyes of your understanding even more about what witnessing for Jesus can do. You need to understand Witnessing for the Lord means you are witnessing or you are sharing the testimony of Jesus Christ. And to do that, we can't do it without having a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit of God. You can't go and talk about someone else that you don't know. But when you know a person so well, when you have spent time with a person, and when you come across another person who doesn't know your friend, then you can open up and say, oh, my friend is a great friend. You can begin to tell things about your friend because you have associated that person. Therefore, my precious people of God, how can we witness about Jesus through the Holy Spirit of God if we have not built a relationship with the Holy Spirit? This is what happens with children of God today. So I pray today that you will not take anyone for granted, for example, when you are uh, traveling by the train or when you are walking down the street, if you see someone holding a sign saying, no, Jesus is coming back soon, don't just turn a blind eye. No. Now, something that I do, I'll tell you, you know, whenever I go to London, I, when I see a person like this, I just go and encourage them. I don't give, go and give them a big sermon. I don't tell them, oh, I'm also a pastor. No, I just tap their back and say, keep up the good work. God bless you. Because that is witnessing the Lord. That takes great boldness to do that. People who preach out there on the streets, they do that by because they have taken the, the seriousness of witnessing for the Lord have sunk deep into their spirit. Now, you may not be called to you know, witness the Lord like that, but in your own unique way, you need to ask the Holy Spirit of God to show you probably it may be a person the Lord wants you to witness Jesus at your workplace. So at your workplace, it's not that God has called you to, you know, write a, a huge uh, board in a, you know, in a piece of paper saying, you know, oh, Jesus is coming back soon. He, it's not that Jesus wants you to go to your office and hold that board and wait without doing your work. The next thing you know is to, uh, the following day, you'll get an email from your boss saying, oh, we don't need you anymore. And then don't come and blame me. Yeah. <laughs> you must know how God has called you to share the testimony of Jesus in your own unique way. So therefore, today, I'm going to share with you three ways that you should witness for Jesus. How should you witness of Jesus? How can you? 
witness Jesus through someone else, to someone else. And if you have these three areas, my precious people of God, if you develop these three areas inside of you, you will become such a powerful witness. Now, how many of you want to become a bold witness for the Lord? You want to go and share the word of God. Like I said, in the way that you have been called to do it. You ask the Lord to show you what you have been called to do, how you have been called to witness for the Lord. And then you want to take it seriously and go out there and share the testimony of Jesus with someone else. The first way, you know, that what needs to develop inside of you in order for you and I to become a powerful witness for Jesus is your conviction. Your conviction. Without conviction, my precious will of God, you can't go and witness about Jesus to someone else. Why? Because there is a different kind of conviction that the Holy Spirit gives. So without having that conviction, you can't go and preach about Jesus. Do you understand the difference? There is a particular type of conviction, which is a very powerful type of conviction, only the Holy Spirit can give you and I. Unless, or outside of that conviction, there is no ability or power to witness of the Lord. This is why Jesus says in Acts chapter 1, verse number 8, you will receive power. Another version says, you receive the ability to witness of Jesus when you receive the Holy Spirit of God. Because you receive the conviction. You get so convicted. Oh, I need to share the good news. I need to share about Jesus. Conviction is the starting point. And the Holy Spirit of God brings conviction into your heart. And you can't have that conviction without having a relationship with the Holy Spirit. The more you get to know him, the Holy Spirit will sharpen that conviction inside of you. Now, for the rest of this message, I'm going to show you, uh, share with you from the life of Peter, how Peter witnessed of Jesus through conviction. He was so convicted after Jesus ascended into heaven. Let's read Acts chapter 2, verse 29 to 32. Acts chapter 2, verses 29 to 32. Paul is telling here, Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. He, for saying this, spoke concerning the resurrection of Jesus, that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God has raised up, of which we are all witnesses. Can you see how Peter, out of that conviction, he is telling, we are all witnesses for the law. He is strengthening the fellow brethren and saying, I am so convicted of my Savior Jesus that out of my conviction that you will also be strengthened. Do you know your conviction that you have of the Holy Spirit will, can strengthen other people who are weak? Fellow brothers and sisters who are weak, who are struggling, can be strengthened by the conviction that you carry in the Holy Spirit of God. That is why Paul at one point when writing to one of the uh, churches in one of his ep uh, epistles, he says, because of my afflictions, what I'm going through, it blesses my heart when I see how that is strengthening you because they are seeing the conviction that he has to suffer for the gospel's sake. Yet, it was becoming a blessing, a source of strength to others who were weak and who were struggling. So therefore, the starting point to become a powerful witness for the Lord is your conviction. This is a good place for you to search your heart and ask the Holy Spirit of God to help you to search your heart and say, Lord, show me the real conviction that I have in my heart about you. 
And if there's a gap, if there is a void, the only person who can fill that void received in you is only the Holy Spirit of God. I can only preach this message. I can't bring that conviction. By the preaching, I can only share with you what the Holy Spirit has placed in my heart. That conviction has to come from the Holy Spirit of God. That is why, as a servant of God, I cry day in and day out whenever I preach. I have a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit. Very important. Number two, out of the conviction will come power. You witness for the Lord by power. The power of the Holy Spirit of God. This is why Jesus was telling, you will receive what power. Once the Holy Spirit, once you receive the Holy Spirit of God. And you will, with the power the Holy Spirit of God gives you, you will witness for the Lord. So, we are not talking about a, a powerless Christianity. You need to understand, Christianity is powerful. Because Jesus is powerful. We are not talking about a relationship with the living God that is dead. Because he's a powerful God. You need to understand. Your relationship with the Holy Spirit of God is not a dead relationship. Christianity is powerful. That is why the Bible tells us, speaks about signs, wonders and miracles. That's another way that you witness of the Lord Jesus. Why? Because when you pray for someone, if you go and pray over them saying, oh, in the name of Bhima Pereira, you rise up and walk. Will anything happen? No. Everyone will look at me. They will, you know, they will stretch, their, stretch forth their hands out towards me then. No. It doesn't happen like that. Only in the name of Jesus. For someone, when someone receives their healing, their breakthrough in the name of Jesus, that is a way of us witnessing for the Lord. And we need to understand, out of every message, a pastor, a preacher preaches. You no, know, you can, we can come and you know, preach so many sermons that we think that are great. And when we see miracle signs, wonders, and uh, all this happening, we you know some people can get so puffed up thinking, oh my goodness, look at what the Lord is doing. But do you know what the greatest sermon a person can preach at any given time? It's a message that will never change. The greatest sermon a pastor, a preacher can preach at any given time is the message about salvation. The message about salvation will always be the greatest sermon because there is power in that message. When a person gets saved, they are saved for eternity. They are saved from death. And we need to understand, each and every one of us, we are called to share this message of salvation with others. Like I always say, now me as a pastor, God has called me to do this in a, in a public way, in public forums, openly, holding mics, talking to church settings, to unbelievers, to our, uh, strangers. But in your case, you may be called to do it in a bit of a different way, maybe on a one-to-one -one, one -one basis. So you need to understand, sometimes the message of salvation may impact one person. Whereas there may be times, there will be times where the message of salvation will impact hundreds of thousands. Let me give you an example. In Acts chapter 8, God gave specific instructions to Philip, saying, I want you to go into this particular street in Gaza. And there was an Ethiopian eunuch. I was traveling there at that time. And the Lord, the Holy Spirit, touched that Ethiopian eunuch through Philip at that point. And the message of salvation was given to one person at that time. Now, there were also other times where the message of salvation impacted thousands. Because the Bible tells us, when we read Acts chapter 2, verses 40 and 41, the Bible tells us when, with the first sermon that Peter prayed, 3,000 souls got saved. And with many other words, Peter testified and exalted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. 
Then those who gladly re received his word were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. So can you see the power of the message of salvation? How you can share about Jesus with someone else is out of the conviction that you have in your heart. And that conviction has to come from the Holy Spirit of God. Without having that conviction, my precious people of God, you can't go and share Christ with someone else. Then, when you begin to take the message of salvation seriously, you know what happens? The third thing that we witness for the Lord is by humility and boldness. By humility and boldness. You know what humility is? Humility is when you are not ashamed of the gospel. When a person doesn't want to share about Christ, that person unknowingly could be entertaining pride in their heart. Because a person who is humble, who is humble, who exercises humility before God, they don't want to just keep treasuring their salvation up until the day they go to be with the Lord. No, they want to share that good news. The way that they have been called to do that. So you don't become ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. Let me share a couple of uh, references from scripture so that you will understand how we shouldn't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. How many of you are telling Lord, help me this evening not to become ashamed of you. Help me not to be ashamed of you, Father. Wherever you send me, Lord, help me to boldly share the word of God with your children. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. Look at what Paul is telling. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Look at what he's telling. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. My goodness, this is big. Paul is telling young Timothy, don't be ashamed of the gospel of God. And you become a partake. Share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the here. God will not let you go through persecution without first giving you the power and the ability to go through that. And you see the revelation that Paul is shedding light to here. He is telling if you have to go through persecution, that also means that God has given you the ability and the power to go through that. So if you are a child of God who's, who wants to take a step back, saying, oh no, it's only pastors who are called to you know, preach the gospel and you know, go whatever the persecution they may have to go through. No, you need to understand. As you take the message of salvation to other people, not everyone will welcome it. But that's okay. It's not your duty to convict them. It's only the Holy Spirit of God can convict the hearts. Remember this. Your job is only to share Christ with others. Because in Matthew chapter 24, verse number 14, Jesus says, when Jesus comes back for his second coming, no one at that time on earth will be able to look at Jesus and say, oh, I didn't hear about you. Because Jesus says, every single person, verse number 14 in chapter 24, Jesus says, the gospel, the gospel of this salvation will have spread to every corner of this earth. So no one will be able to give that excuse. So my precious people of God, don't worry about who is going to accept and who is not going to accept. Your job is to ask the Holy Spirit of God shows you, share about Christ. The conviction is what the Holy Spirit of God brings. And you will also come to such a strong place in your intimate journey with the Lord to such an extent where as you share about Christ, people will sense the tone of conviction that you are speaking to them with. And that itself will convict you. But my precious people of God, to get there, you need to first start at the starting point. Philippians chapter 1, verse 19 to 21. Philippians chapter 1, verses 19 to 21. Again, look, let's look at what Paul is telling. 
For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For me to live is Christ and to die is King. Can you see what Paul is saying here again? He's telling, I don't want to be ashamed, but with all boldness, I want to share about Christ. Because for me to live is Christ and for me to die is gain. Do not be ashamed to witness for the Lord. Because witnessing for the Lord can open up powerful doors in your life. Do you know, while we were worshipping today, something the Holy Spirit of God told me was, he reminded to me, in the book, book of uh, Acts chapter 4, the Bible tells us something very powerful. The Bible tells us, that, as a matter of fact, in a moment, we'll go there, but uh, let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says, none of the disciples at that time had any lack. Not a single disciple had any lack because they were so focused on witnessing for the Lord. Therefore, the Bible tells us everyone came together. None of them looked at what they had and said, oh, this is mine. This is my house. This is my car. My car, my petrol. I drive my car. You walk. No? They didn't say anything like that. No, the Bible says they kept everything common. And because of that, the Bible says, they had no lack. You know what the Holy Spirit of God was telling me? Tell my children to witness for me. Tell them to witness for me and I will make sure that they will not lack anything. Do you know when you witness for the Lord, you know, I'll tell you what the uh, Holy Spirit is reminding me right now. He's reminding me of the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So, when you are witnessing Jesus with others, you are seeking, you are not only seeking the kingdom of God, but you are standing right with the Lord. Because as a child of God, you are called to minister to others about Christ. So when you are seeking the kingdom of God, and when you are standing right with the Lord by sharing the testimony of Jesus, what does Jesus say? Everything that you need will be added unto you. So my precious people of God, for those of you, you have been waiting for certain answers for a long time probably and you are not seeing things manifest, ask the Holy Spirit of God to strengthen you in this area where you will become a powerful witness for the Lord. And as you with, start witnessing for the Lord, powerful doors will begin to open up. Now let me give you an example. Now one thing is, it's one thing to hear from the Holy Spirit of God and it's another thing to be obedient. Now, for those of you who were there in our Saturday Bible study yesterday, you would have seen a different person leading worship. Because the Lord showed it was time for Preeti to take that calling more seriously. And by doing that, what is she doing? She's ministering to others. She's reaching out to others. She's letting the Holy Spirit of God flow through her. So when a person begins to serve the Lord and starts ministering and starts sharing about Christ, Powerful doors will begin to open up. So for those of you, you are the only thing that you are uh, focused about is you no know, wake up in the morning, go to your office, do your work, come back. You don't even think, you know, while you, while you are working, you don't even, this thought never crosses your mind about, you know, how God wants to speak to someone who is there. It never crosses your mind. You are simply Wasting a lot of things in your life. Just by not sharing the gospel with someone. And you must do it wisely. Now, there are people here, if you talk to them, they will tell you how in their workplaces the Lord has opened up doors for them to share about Christ. So find someone who carries the fire of the Holy Spirit of God like that. Because the Bible says, iron sharpens iron. There's so much that we can learn from each other. So the Bible tells us, don't be ashamed. Now let's look at the words of Jesus. Luke chapter 9, verse 23 to 26. Luke chapter 9, verses 23 
chapter 26. Then Jesus said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? Now look at what Jesus is telling in verse number 26. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. Look at what Jesus is telling. If someone is ashamed of me, Jesus is telling, I will also have to be ashamed of them. This is why we can't be ashamed of being a child of God. This is your real identity in Christ. Your true identity is that you are a witness for the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 18 onwards, Paul says that we are ambassadors for Christ. As an ambassador, you are called to witness. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 20. As an ambassador of Christ, you are called to witness for the Lord. Now I'm going to share that no matter what kind of pressure came upon the disciples of the early church, they refused to be ashamed of Jesus. This is a season the Lord is taking us into as ambassadors of Christ, no matter what kind of pressure you may have to go through, my precious people of God, refuse to be ashamed of Jesus. How many of you will say, Lord, teach me not to be ashamed of you in Jesus' name. We will read Acts chapter 4, verse 13 to 22. Acts chapter 4, verse 13 to 22. Now we will look at what, how Peter and John, when they were threatened by certain leaders of the synagogue saying, do not continue to preach in the name of Jesus, we will look at their reply, okay? Now, when they saw, saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus and seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves saying, what shall we do to these men? For indeed, that a notable miracle has been done through them, and it is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in this name. Now, let us pause there for a little. Now, how many of you know what this incident is about? We had to backtrack to chapter number three. Remember when Peter and John went to the temple to pray? That is called beautiful. There's a man who was lame at the temple gate. So after this man was healed, can you see whenever the person was healed, trouble came their way. So here is the church leaders again persecuting Paul and, uh, sorry, Peter and John. Verse number 18. Look at what happens. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all no teach in the name of Jesus. Look at the answer of Peter in verse number 19. But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, or you judge, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Look at what Peter is telling. I'm so sorry. You don't want us to speak about Jesus? So sorry. We will continue to do it. You do what you like. In other words, this is what he was telling. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way of punishing them. Because of the people, since they all glorified for what had been done, for the man was over 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing had been performed. So can you see how Peter and John refused to be ashamed of Jesus? There will be times that, you know, the circumstances that you go through will pressurize you during certain moments. 
to not to witness the Lord. Those are the moments that you need to refuse to be ashamed of Jesus. And with the boldness the Holy Spirit gives you. Now look at what happens, okay? Look at what happens. When you receive boldness from the Holy Spirit of God, powerful things begin to take place. And we are coming to the, the end of, the, of today's sermon. Today, the Lord was showing me as I was getting ready with this message. He says, son, at the end, pray for boldness. Pray for boldness for my children. This is what he said, this is what I want you to pray for my children. Pray for boldness because when you have the boldness that the Holy Spirit of God gives, then you will not be ashamed of the testimony of Christ. Because if we don't ever have, have that boldness, we will easily throw in the towel. We will run away from situations. We will run away from places. Let's look at what happened in Acts chapter 4, verse number 31. In Acts chapter 4, verse number 31, we can see them laying hands on fellow other disciples and they are praying for boldness so that they will be bold in the Holy Spirit. Look at what happens as they pray. Acts chapter 4, verse number 31. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. My goodness. When they prayed for boldness, the Bible tells us that place that they were literally shook. And then all were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. My goodness, they laid hands, they prayed for boldness, the place that they were in, it shook. They received a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit of God and they spoke the word of God with boldness. You know, in this season, what the Holy Spirit of God wants us to do. Be a witness for Jesus in the way that he has called you to be a witness for the Lord. As a pastor, as a minister of Christ, he wants me to share the word of God boldly during this season. Openly, publicly preach the truth the way the truth has to be preached. The same way God has called you also to preach the word of God in the unique way that you have been called to do. Like I said, don't ever, ever compare your calling with someone else's calling. Your, comp your calling in the Lord is completely different. Your calling could be to minister Christ to someone on a one-to-one -one basis. So you need to, my precious people of God, discern the way that God has called you to do it and then boldly witness for the Lord. And with this kind of boldness, the Holy Spirit gives you will witness about Jesus powerfully. The last portion of scripture for today. Acts chapter 4, verse 23. Uh, sorry, Acts chapter 4, verse 32 and 33. Acts chapter 4, verse 32 and 33. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. Remember what I said before, that no uh, disciple had any lack. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Do you know if you need more grace, something that you need to do? Share about Christ. Because the Bible is telling us here, as they witnessed about Jesus' move, great grace was upon them all. So I know we all pray every day saying, Lord, give me more grace. Give me more grace, Lord. Give me more grace. But in order for you and I to receive more grace, sometimes there are certain little, little things that God expects from us. And one of those things that he desires in his heart is for us to share about his son, Jesus, with others. So as we begin to worship the Lord now, we are going to pray for boldness. The boldness only the Holy Spirit of God can give. And with that kind of boldness that he gives, that he's going to impart today, I pray that you will become a powerful witness of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 
And as we begin to worship the Lord, I pray that every form of fear we leave you in Jesus' name. There are some of you, you are thinking, you are telling yourself, oh, I have not shared Christ with at least a single person in my entire life. If that is you, you lift up your hands unto the Lord and say, Lord, remove every form of fear out of my heart because I want to boldly share. I want to be a bold witness of you, Lord. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood runs through. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. You split the sea so I can walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. How many of you are telling this evening, Lord? Strengthen my faith, Lord, this evening. Help me, Lord, to be a powerful witness for you. In the name of Jesus, Lord, help me to boldly share about you, Father. Help me, Lord, to be bold in witnessing for you. Lord, today I know that you have commissioned me, Lord, to share about you by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Oh, Play the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were proud and perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. I am a child. Oh, God.
continue worshiping the Lord, you can get the communion elements ready to partake in the table of grace. <laughs> Give me vision to see things like you do. Lord, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom to know just what to do. Lord, I look to you. I won't be over. Jesus, to say things like you do, Lord, I look to you, you're where my help comes from, give me wisdom, to know just what to do, and I will love you, Lord. chapter 6 verse number 35 Jesus said I'm the bread of life Jesus is, the, is truly the bread of life precious Lord Jesus this evening as we hold the bread in our hands we remember your body that you gave sacrificially for us the body your body that you gave willingly for us on the cross of Calvary thank you Jesus thank you for the water and the blood that gushed out of your body. Thank you for every whiplash that you took on your back because of me, Lord Jesus. Thank you for taking my sin, my shame, my guilt upon you. I'm forever grateful for you, what you have done for me on Calvary. In Jesus' name, you may partake the body of Christ.
There's victory in the blood of Jesus. There's victory in the blood of Jesus. It washes white as Precious Jesus, thank you for blood. Thank you for blood that cleanses and washes my sin as white as snow. Thank you for blood that has placed the strongest teacher on me and my family. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I declare as you meditate on the blood of Jesus that you are covered on all sides by the blood of Jesus. Not just you, your marriage, your family, your ministry, your workplace, everything is covered under the blood of Jesus and when the destroyer comes the destroyer will only pass by because it will notice the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus that speaks greater than the blood of Abel in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus thank you Lord you may partake the blood of Christ is prompting me to worship him with this song as the benediction for today. Because he's telling me that there are quite a lot of you who are awaiting heaven's response. And he's reminded me of Psalm chapter 23. The psalmist says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lay down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, Lord. Your rod and your staff, and today it's his presence that comforts us. You anoint my head with oil, so that my cups run, run so well. Surely goodness and mercy will follow us every single day of our lives. We are going to sing Psalm 23 as the benediction today. Lord's my shepherd, but I not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my and I will trust in you alone and I will trust in you alone for your endless mercy follows me your goodness will Those of you, you are awaiting heaven's response. Tell the Lord, Lord, you are my only source. And I choose not to be worried. I choose to trust in you. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is my share, but I'm not born. He makes me alive in past.
goodness will be oh. Shall lift up our hands unto the Lord and say, Your goodness will be oh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. May the grace of the Lord and the love of the Father Worship of the Spirit be with you. May the grace of the Lord and the love of the Father, the fellowship of the Spirit be with you. May the grace of the Lord and the love of the Father. Of the Spirit be with you. May the grace of the Lord and the love of the Father, the fellowship of the Spirit be with you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, and all God's people say, Amen.